Hello! In the last video we managed to get an old battered Amiga 2000 working. In this video we're going to take a look at a few upgrades and then attempt to improve the appearance of the machine. The first thing I want to do is deal with the rust. It's only in a few places but I really think this can be improved. There's rust on these expansion covers and a little on the screws and a little around the audio connectors on the back too. Now I'm going to target each one of these in a different way. Firstly, the two connectors. After removing the motherboard, I'm just going to clean these with a small amount of Dremel action. And I'm sure some of you are screaming at me not to do this. The advantage though is not only does it remove the rust, it actually makes the surface more conductive by making it a little bit rougher. You can also use WD-40 to remove rust and I'm going to use that to finish it off. For the rest of the pieces however, I'm going to use a different technique. First, I'm going to remove all of the back planes and screws from the case. The screws I'm going to put in here and spray some WD-40 on them and I'll leave them to soak a little. I've got this tub here with four sacrificial anodes, each one is a carbon rod. Now you can use steel here, not stainless steel, but carbon rods work better. The water's warm, not boiling, and I'm just going to add some soda crystals, these being sodium carbonate, and these help reduce the resistance of the water. It's important to wear gloves here as this stuff isn't very nice. Now I'm going to put each of the back planes in here connected with a crocodile clip. It doesn't matter if these touch each other as long as they don't touch the carbon rods. I'll then connect the rods to the positive supply and the back plane to the negative. Now this will require quite a decent power supply. To power this up I'm using my bench power supply and it says it's pulling 12 volts 5 amps and you can see it's fizzing away right away. Now the theory here is the electrons move from the negative towards the positive and in doing so pull the rust particles with them. Using carbon rods prevents any plating on these, it doesn't take very long either. Now you can see as I'm pulling them out they appear to have some black powder on them, this is from the carbon rods. If we'd used steel it would have actually coated them in steel, this is why carbon is better as it won't stick. So I'll go and clean them up and whilst doing that let's take a look at the screws. Well given the colour of the water it's clearly done something but I'm not that impressed with the results. So I'm chucking them back into the soda crystals electrolysis trick again, leaving them for about 10 minutes and have another look. I'm not sure what the gases are that come off this, although some of it's actually steam given the water has actually got pretty hot. Wise to do this in a well ventilated area. And I'm not saying they're perfect, but they do look a lot better. The brackets however, well they've come up really well. Sure the metal doesn't look perfect at all but at least the rust has gone. So that's the rust dealt with and it's quite a quick and easy process. And if you've got a big enough tub this might be a great way to remove the rust from some of the shielding on other Amigas. Now sure I could have just replaced those pieces and screws with brand new ones, but where's the fun in that? On to installing upgrades and I'm going to guide you through each of them. And we're going to start with the GVP2000 HC8 SCSI controller card. Taking a quick look at it you can see this is where the hard drive would be installed and there's 8 spaces for RAM. This card allows you to upgrade your Amiga with a full 8 megabytes of fast RAM and this revision of the card allows you to do this with 8 1 megabyte 30 pin sims or 2 4 megabyte sims. And as luck would have it I happen to have 8 1 megabyte sims so we'll add them now. Once installed we have to change the jumpers to reflect the amount of RAM this card now has. Next up the hard drive. Well I don't want to use one of these heavy bulky things so we're going to use a blue SCSI version 2 instead. Now normally the hard drive would be installed into this area of the GVP card, but I want the SD card to be accessible from the back of the machine and I have two options. The designs for these will be in the video description. The first is to mount the blue SCSI into one of the card slots using this bracket. This would work very well but I have another option. The Amiga 2000 has these extra blanks that you can remove and I can use this bracket to install it there, leaving the other slots free. Back to the GVP, to make this auto boot we need to put a jumper in here, which enables the boot ROM on the GVP card. With having an internal hard drive I suspect I might want to install some games, and with that we'll probably be using WHD load. Now this has a 68000 processor, and with them there's no way to exit those games without a reboot, but if I install this processor then that will work. This is a 68010 CPU and it should be a drop in replacement. In some fairly rare circumstances it will slightly increase the speed of the system too, but there's a small possibility of incompatibilities. Now the last thing is a more modern RGB to HDMI adapter. This is purely to make the machine easier to connect up to things and I've got this lovely card from Linux Jedi, needs a bracket which I happen to have here and this one fits into the Amiga 2000 video card slot, making this probably one of the neatest ways to add these. So with all of that information, let's get them installed, and we're going to start with the RGB to HDMI adapter.
So, on to something a little more dirty. The keyboard. You saw in my last video how bad this looks, so I think the first thing to do is open it up and remove all of the keys and give everything a good clean. At the same time, I'm going to clean the main case too and remove some of the sticky goo from the outside. Just take a look at this keyboard. Ew, that's so nasty and needs a good clean. Weirdly, the main keys on this have stayed white, so I don't really need to do anything with them. But the spacebar and the keyboard case have gone that lovely yellow colour. So, I'm going to use the vapour brightening technique to try and restore as much colour as possible. I'll start with this tray, and I'll put some pots in the bottom to use as spacers. Then we can place the keyboard parts and spacebar on top. Next, I'm adding some hydrogen peroxide. Wearing gloves, it's nasty stuff. This is 12% strength. Then I'm balancing the keyboard parts and spacebar on those spacers, suspended above the peroxide, not in it. I've also placed a small heating pad underneath. It doesn't get very hot, but it should keep the solution warm. Finally, I'm going to try to speed this up by adding an ultraviolet floodlight above it. And I'm going to leave this as long as I possibly can to see what happens. So, after a few days, which is really all the time I had, I've removed everything and washed off the peroxide. So, let's assemble the keyboard. <laughs> So looking at the keyboard case you can see it's brightened up quite a lot and this area here where it was a two-tone colour is now less visible. Probably could have done with a bit longer and for the top section again brighter although this corner is a little more yellow. This might be the positioning of the light source. Not a problem, I can always repeat this in future. On to reassembling the rest of the keyboard. It looks better and if nothing else it's so much cleaner. Here's a photo of the original so you can compare them. As for the front of the case, it's a little better. This hasn't been in as long as the keyboard, but I think that's enough for now. So, the keyboard's all good. Could be better, but it's not that bad for a first attempt. And this method of retro brighting does seem to prevent any marbling effects. Now there's one last thing I want to do, and that's the metal lid. Ignoring the front part that I've removed to clean, the remaining area is actually powder coated metal. Now I could get this stripped back and re-powder coated, but I'm not even sure where I'd to take it to do this, let alone the colour match. So, I've opted to use a vinyl wrap instead, specifically one designed for the Amiga 2000. And it came wrapped up in this tube. So, let's take a look and apply it to the case. The instructions that come with this vinyl wrap are really good and they're very easy to follow. So, off we go.
And there you have it. It does look better, but aside from that you can't really tell what's been done from the outside, although I have added the missing screws to the case. I was going to add a SCSI CD-ROM drive, but the one I appear to have doesn't work, so I've left that out for now. There are however several other upgrades we could look at, such as swapping out one of the floppy drives with a GoTech, or adding an accelerator, an RTG graphics card, or a network card, or something else, or, for the more adventurous, we could perform a full ECS 2MB upgrade on the system. But I'll save these for another time. For now, I've upgraded it yet again to Kickstart 3.1 just for some more features, and I'm really happy with the finished result. I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.